Hello, I'm Scott Thompson and welcome to After 10. December 1st is World AIDS Day, designated in 1988 by the World Health Organization to curb the spread of HIV worldwide. To hear more about the efforts being done to do just that, we are joined today by the Executive Director of UN AIDS, Michelle Sidibe. December 1st marks World AIDS Day, designated by the World Health Organization. UNAIDS has announced getting to zero 2011 to 2015 strategy as an official theme of World AIDS Day to get the number of people who are newly infected with HIV to zero by 2015. 12월 1일은 세계 보건 기구가 정한 세계 AIDS의 날입니다. AIDS는 이겨 나갈 수 있는 질병에 불과합니다. UN도 2011년부터 Getting to Zero라는 기체 아래 각국이 AIDS 예방과 AIDS 환자에 대한 차별 해소에 나설 것을 촉구하는 캠페인을 전개하고 있습니다. The leaders' declaration announced at the APEC summit this past October showed strong support for UN AIDS. Michelle Sidibe, executive director of UNAIDS, has urged the world to pay attention to the fight against AIDS. He tells us more about the global efforts to raise HIV awareness and eliminate the virus once and for all. Mr. Sidibe, thank you very much for being on the program. Thank you very much for receiving me today. Now, you are the executive director of UNAIDS. Tell us about the organization, when it was established, and what it aims to do. You know, 15 years back, uh, when uh, the crisis was uh, overwhelming most of the um, leaders of this world, uh, the world came together to create UNAIDS. UNAIDS because uh, we wanted uh, to have a coordinated effort uh, through a one UN organization and making sure that we can reduce duplication and create a space for global advocacy by producing strategic information on AIDS status in the world, but also mobilizing technical support where we could find it to address this epidemic. And it has been a wonderful journey. And that, that's the goal. Um, you mentioned the efforts that are being taken to reach that goal. Tell us about some of the things that UNAIDS does on the ground in different countries throughout the world. I think what we are doing is uh, to help uh, countries first uh, to develop uh, their uh, national strategic plan, uh, to be aware of uh, the magnitude of the epidemic, uh, and knowing exactly uh, where they should invest their resources to have a maximum of return on dollars invested, but also uh, keeping an eye on uh, uh, epidemic uh, evolution. Because uh, f in 15 years back, epidemic was completely different from one region to another region uh, than what we have today. Today, we, we can say, for example, that uh, we don't have any more the fastest epidemic in Africa uh, when we know that uh, it's happening in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. So the dynamic of the epidemic change. So our effort is to produce uh, strategic information to help uh, countries to have a technical uh, capability to address uh, this epidemic in uh, the right manner and also make sure that uh, we help a global fund and also other organizations like uh, PEPFAR, Emergency Fund uh, of U.S., to maximize the resources they are making available to the countries. You talk about this term, e epidemic evolution. Uh, give us a sense of the number of people living with HIV now, newly infected people uh, who are being infected each year. What are some of the numbers and how has the epidemic evolved over the past 15, 20 years? You know, we can say that we are breaking completely the trajectory of the epidemic today. Uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, 34 uh, million people uh, infected. The numbers of people who are uh, infected will continue to increase because uh, we are lucky that uh, we have been able to put more people on treatment so people are living longer. 
But we have to recognize that uh, just a few years back, no one could have believed that we could even give treatment to poor people. The treatment cost was $15,000 per person per year. We were giving uh, almost 18 pills a day to any sick person. And uh, today, uh, the cost of treatment is uh, $80 per person per year, and we're giving only one pill. So we changed completely the paradigms of uh, uh, the dynamic of this epidemic by uh, giving more services to more people. We have more than 10 million people today on treatment. The reason for this decline, the number of newly infected people throughout the world is on the decline. The medicine is the main reason, or what are the other factors involved there? I think uh, it's a um, um, holistic approach. Uh, we have to recognize that uh, medicine play a, a great role, because when you uh, give a medicine to uh, people, and particularly when you treat them early, we know that uh, you can uh, reduce the number of new infection but more than that one we are reducing also the mortality rate uh, because people are uh, healthier and they can really contribute to their uh, uh, nation building but uh, I can say that uh, one of the major, major reasons was also we managed to uh, broke the conspiracy of silence we uh, uh, managed to have also uh, young people at the center of uh, our response, not only as a simple beneficiaries of our program, but as actor of change. And that changed completely the dynamic of uh, what we are seeing. Uh, just a few years back, we had only Thailand uh, as a, a, a successful uh, example in terms of prevention, Thailand and Uganda. And today we have uh, 56 uh, countries in the world who have been able to stabilize or reduce uh, significantly the number of new infections. So prevention, uh, treatment, and also uh, breaking uh, the conspiracy of silence by uh, uh, making emerging civil society and uh, political leadership. And then in terms of treatment, which we talked about before, the, the medicines, the, uh, the antiviral medicines, uh, have really changed the playing field in a lot of ways. How, how has that changed the way HIV is viewed and treated at the same time? You know, uh, it was a death sentence. You have to know that few years back when you were just HIV positive, uh, it was a death sentence. Today is a chronic disease. You have, uh, uh, with a treatment, we can completely change uh, the paradigm of uh, uh, what was the disease before. But what I want to also add to that one is that uh, we have to also be careful. Uh, it's not just about a pill. It's about also how we restore dignity of people, how we make sure that uh, uh, at least even if we treat them, we we pay attention to toxicities. We pay attention to the new molecules. We pay attention to the fact that uh, aging will also bring different disease, uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, certainly other type of disease, which we need to also uh, probably uh, take into account. And when talking about the medicine, this is not necessarily a level playing field. There are certain countries who are benefiting more from uh, the treatment medicines, while other countries and continents are not uh, getting the benefits of that. Uh, when you look at the situation there, the playing field, how do you view that? You know, the metaphor of the response is uh, inequality, of the response to HIV AIDS. You're right. If you look at today, you have uh, 10 million people who have access to treatment, but we have uh, almost uh, 18 million people waiting for treatment. Who needs treatment today? If they don't have treatment now, they will uh, start dying in the next uh, years uh, to two years maximum. But uh, what we, uh, we are seeing also is that if you look at the uh, 1.7 million deaths per year, 90% of those people who are dying are dying in uh, developing uh, uh, countries, particularly in Africa. So 
you have a problem of equity, you have a problem of social justice, you have a problem of redistribution of opportunity. That is the, the black side of all this uh, uh, epidemic. It's uh, calling for uh, uh, in, a new way to really uh, make uh, uh, available the, the science uh, evidence. And we should not accept uh, uh, to left uh, some uh, uh, people behind. So I, mean, I guess the question is, and how do you get from where we are now to where we should be in, in that respect? I think that's where uh, um, global solidarity is very important. And uh, we need to continue. Uh, it has been uh, just amazing what we saw uh, with HIV AIDS. It happened with, uh, uh, during this last 20 years, I can say it is the only uh, disease uh, which has been able to uh, bring all the uh, different uh, uh, constituencies together. We need to continue to galvanize that. But we need also uh, to be realistic. It's not possible uh, to put uh, people on uh, treatment based only on resources coming from uh, uh, outside of your country. We need a shared responsibility. We need to make sure that we share the burden. And that's why we have been able to engage African countries to bring them in the debate. Today, Africa increased their uh, domestic resources to HIV by 150%. Uh, uh, South Africa alone is paying $2 billion uh, every year uh, uh, to fight HIV AIDS in their country. They are the second largest national investment on HIV today. So we want to see uh, those transformations happening. Global solidarity, but uh, with a shared responsibility. And this is, of course, a global problem. Um, some may say, some may question that too much attention maybe is being uh, directed toward these developing countries and maybe not enough now uh, towards some of the developed countries, that the sense of urgency, the sense of uh, uh, caution there has sort of gone to the wayside. Do you see that as being a reality? Oh, you're right. Uh, you know, what is, uh, that's why with HIV, you, you cannot be complacent. Uh, we are seeing in Australia, in uh, um, uh, uh, Paris, uh, in uh, um, Switzerland, in different parts of the world today, in, in U.S., an increase on uh, new infection uh, amongst uh, uh, young gay. And, uh, and that is uh, why we need to continue uh, to have uh, this uh, constant uh, advocacy, constant uh, uh, capacity uh, to really uh, inform young people. And we need to think about our uh, uh, sexuality education. So looking on uh, uh, universal sexuality education as a, a way forward, because it's the only way we can equip our young people with the knowledge and skills so they can be protecting themselves. They can be able uh, to really take uh, the right uh, decision uh, when it's about their sexuality. And that is, for me, very key. Education is one of the most important things that your organization does, UNAIDS does. Um, Still, after all this time, there are misconceptions out there about HIV, about AIDS. Could you tell us uh, some of the more common misconceptions and give us the truth behind? You know, matter? a few years back, uh, people were thinking, in particularly uh, in uh, Africa, that uh, uh, you can uh, get uh, AIDS by uh, just a uh, mosquito. Uh, so people uh, could uh, think uh, that uh, uh, HIV is uh, just uh, by touching someone you can uh, ha uh, have uh, HIV. So what I am seeing more and more now is uh, that uh, people are better informed. Uh, but uh, the difficulties we are having is uh, to what type of communication which new uh, way to communicate with the young people in areas where a treatment has been producing amazing results, when they are not seeing any more people dying, when they are not seeing any more people being sick, how to really reconcile that with uh, prevention uh, 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 information? 
And UNAIDS has announced a policy statement on HIV testing and counseling. Um, this is encouraging countries to adopt it uh, as a national policy. Tell us about the policy and what it aims to do. You know, we are just trying to make sure that uh, we can have a maximum of uh, uh, people uh, being tested and uh, also uh, treat people early because we know that uh, when you treat people early, you can also uh, reduce uh, the co-infection, tuberculosis and HIV. Uh, we can uh, reduce the mortality due to those co-infections. We can also uh, make sure that uh, we reduce the uh, new infection by 96% when we put people early on treatment. You know, so for me, that is uh, why we are uh, trying to really push uh, this uh, uh, agenda of uh, one side uh, integration, uh, making sure that uh, we don't have just uh, a specific corner for HIV, another specific corner for TB, but integrating all those uh, services together, but also uh, uh, expanding the capacity of services to uh, make uh, reach people where they are so they can have access uh, to testing services. And if they, are, they, they know their status, of course, they will uh, fight for having access to treatment. And for us, that is a goal, making sure that no one is left behind. I, and for me, that is uh, a very strong statement because I know that uh, by doing that one, we will be able uh, to end this epidemic. Since UNAIDS has promoted policies to prevent HIV AIDS, the number of people newly infected with HIV has decreased. 2.3 million people were newly infected with HIV in 2012, a 33% decrease compared to that in 2001. And the number is expected to decrease to 1 million by the year 2015. When Looking at rates of infection, uh, when you look at Asia, when you look at Korea, how does yeah. it compare to other regions throughout the world? I think uh, 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 we have multiple epidemic today. You have a different nature of epidemic. Uh, like I just said, the fastest epidemic uh, today, they are in Eastern Europe and Central Asia and also Middle East. But uh, at the same time, each uh, a region, uh, we can say, they have uh, particularities in, um, in terms of the nature of their epidemic. You take uh, Asia, we're seeing a growing epidemic still amongst uh, men having sex with men. Uh, in some other places, people who inject the drugs. And uh, some other places are clients of uh, a sex worker. So you have, uh, a, in uh, Africa, we are seeing a growing epidemic amongst uh, stable uh, uh, relationship, which why, is, why is uh, it means uh, that uh, the couples who are married, you will have uh, a growing uh, HIV infection amongst those group. And uh, we've also a, 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 a more than 60% of uh, uh, discordant couples. So the husband is uh, HIV positive, the wife is not, or the wife is uh, positive and the husband is not. So we are seeing a, a kind of uh, growing epidemics amongst a stable uh, uh, relationship, which will uh, certainly call for different type of uh, uh, prevention measure in the future. But uh, in Eastern Europe is uh, mainly people who inject the drugs. And uh, that, I think we need to deal with those uh, specificities today. And the Korean government has been more active in recent years in, in addressing the issue, including holding the International Congress on AIDS in Asia and the Pacific alongside uh, UNAIDS. Uh, what sorts of cooperative measures are being taken right now between UNAIDS and the Korean government uh, about uh, regarding AIDS? Yeah, we, 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 we are seeing a, a sea change. Um, uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, with the leadership of uh, um, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, we have been able to advocate strongly and to remove travel restriction in uh, South Korea. It, uh, that is a strong uh, sign uh, uh, from uh, the leadership of South Korea uh, to, to the, uh, their desire to really respect the dignity of people who are infected uh, by HIV. 
but also we are seeing their uh, direct involvement in uh, many programs uh, throughout uh, the world today uh, trying to address uh, these uh, issues of HIV. Their uh, uh, commitment to the Global Fund uh, as a mechanism for uh, uh, financing HIV AIDS program throughout the world. So we are, and even uh, the understanding of uh, um, uh, political leadership on the issues is completely changing. So for me, uh, I'm seeing positive sign, which is very encouraging. Uh, when looking outside of Korea, what kind of cooper uh, cooperation would UN AIDS like from, from Korea, from the Korean government, uh, as it pertains to the spread of AIDS elsewhere? You know, I think uh, South Korea can play many uh, uh, functions today. First uh, is a country I consider as a, a, a build on a knowledge uh, economy. So South Africa can collaborate with Africa to transfer knowledge, to transfer competencies, innovation, and uh, using, for example, mobile phone uh, technology to reinforce our health uh, system, uh, information system, and also equipping community uh, uh, leaders, community health worker with uh, mobile phones so they can be able to uh, transmit on uh, real time the information from villages to the referral center. So uh, Korea can be a playing different role. And also uh, in the dialogue of uh, uh, a global uh, partnership, the new type of partnership which could evolve amongst uh, uh, developing uh, world or so-called developing world and uh, uh, um, uh, developed world. Uh, Korea can play the, what I can say in uh, soccer, the middle field player, the one who could be in between uh, taking the ball from one side uh, to the other side. And I think that Korea, South Korea can play this role. December 1st each year is World AIDS Day. Tell us about the significance of this day and how it's maybe changed over the years. No, I think the World AIDS Day for us is always a, a very important moment because uh, we are taking stock on uh, uh, what happened. Uh, we are uh, trying to reflect on uh, uh, the effort which has been made to really uh, produce results for uh, people, but we are also looking for uh, the future. And uh, for me, uh, this year uh, will be a time really in, I will be in Australia uh, with um, Ansan Sushi. And I think it will be certainly a great moment to continue to push the issues of uh, stigma and discrimination and uh, fighting stigma and discrimination and helping to again uh, bring the attention of the world on the 18 million people who are uh, remaining we, uh, in this world without any hope because they don't have access to treatment. And also as a call for uh, uh, redoubling our effort to end the transmission from mother to child because we can have a generation free of HIV by 2015, which could be a very uh, considerable uh, success of a global community. That would certainly be an achievement for anybody who may be watching this right now inside Korea, uh, outside of Korea, anywhere in the world, what message would you like to convey to them? But, but just saying that uh, your, your um, effort uh, is uh, uh, producing result, uh, please, is not time to stop. Certainly an important conversation to have, a very important topic, and we do appreciate you coming by and sharing your insights with us today. Michelle Sidibe, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you, as always, for watching. We'll see you next time after 10.